Hallelujah. The history of redemption in Jesus Christ. Let us continue to testify of the word of God at this time. The word of life today comes from Acts chapter 4, verse 12. I will read. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of God. Amen. The apex or highest point of the history of redemption is Jesus Christ. Therefore, if redemptive history is a mountain, Jesus is at its summit. In the Bible, the Messiah is gradually introduced. God's redemptive plan was that Jesus Christ would die on the cross. Last time, we examined it up to this point. Thirdly, through the cross, Jesus Christ accomplished redemption once for all, and the effect of atonement is eternal. First, let's begin by examining the redemption that has been accomplished once and for all. The Greek word for once for all comes from epapax. It means once for eternity. Although it's one time thing, it's effective forever. Hebrews 7 verse 27 states, He did once for all when he offered up himself. Hebrews 9 verse 26 also states, Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now, once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Also, Hebrews 9 verse 28 and Hebrews 10 verse 10 testify that redemption has been completed once for all. Second, it is an eternal redemption. Jesus Christ, once and for all, accomplished eternal redemption. Look at Hebrews 9 verse 12. And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. During the Old Testament period, there was the holy place and the holy of holies. It is only possible for the high priest to enter this Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement, which is the tenth day of the seventh month. As Jesus died on the cross, the veil between the Holy Place and the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. As a result, a new and living way to enter the Holy of Holies has been eternally opened once for all, as stated in Hebrews 10, verses 20 through 21. Jesus achieved eternal atonement. What is the basis of this fact? It was possible due to Jesus' position as the eternal high priest. It is stated in Hebrews 7, verse 24, that, but Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Furthermore, Hebrews 6 verse 20 states, Where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. As a result of Jesus' eternal high priesthood, we are offered an eternal atonement for our sins. On page 36 of the Genesis genealogies written by Reverend Huizan Abraham Park, it is summarized as follows. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ was not a single independent event that occurred 2,000 years ago. Its power continues to save today 
and his efficacy is everlasting. Jesus' atoning sacrifice on the cross achieved eternal salvation, not a temporal one. Amen. Fourthly, Jesus Christ, the apex of redemptive history, completes the redemptive work through the second coming. Therefore, this is the final completion. God's redemptive work will be completed at the second coming. First, the cross represents the endless love of God for human beings. Take a look at Romans 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The work of redemption was completed through the cross in the first coming. That is why Jesus declared in John 19 verse 30, It is finished. By this, God's redemptive work has been completed. Fulfilled, fully accomplished, he also declares that the task has been completed. As a result, the Holy Spirit enables each individual who is predestined to receive salvation before the ages to benefit from the merits of Jesus' precious blood on the cross. In other words, God guides his people to the path of salvation. Take a look at John 3 verse 5. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We must be born again. Born again. The womb of our mother is the place where we are born. By the Holy Spirit, we are born again spiritually and enter God's kingdom. As a result of Jesus' second coming, the work of redemption will finally be completed. Final completion will be reached. Please refer to 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. It is resurrection. It is also important to note that those of us alive do not need to die since we will be transfigured. Consequently, this is the final completion of salvation. Final completion of salvation is achieved by the second coming of Jesus Christ. On page 37 of Genesis Genealogies, Reverend Huizen Abraham Park concludes this way. The history of God's work of redemption, which has tirelessly run its course since the fall of Adam, will arrive at its glorious completion through the second coming of Christ. It is our calling to be used as God's precious vessels until his work of redemption is complete. Beloved saints, God's redemptive work is advancing without ceasing today. In the name of the Lord, I pray that you and I are held up by God's righteous right hand and will be used in God's redemptive work, leading a holy life that pleases Him. Let us pray. Our living Father, who is in control of life, death, blessings, and curses of all people, you have redeemed us through your passionate love on the cross. Additionally, we are grateful to the Holy Spirit for having us be born again and allowing the work of redemption to be manifested in our lives. Upon the return of the Lord, the final completion of all redemption will be achieved and we will be resurrected 
and transformed into spiritual bodies and shine forever in the kingdom of the Father. Father, as we look forward to that day with hope, may we live our lives in faith that is pleasing to you without any deviation from your fiery eyes. In all things, we thank you and pray earnestly in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.